long, long ago, before the time of your grandmother, and before the time of her grandmother, they lived a Tsar and a Tsaritsa. And I had three sons, three tall, young, brave, kind sons. You couldn't think them, you couldn't dream them, only in stories you could tell them. And these three, these three sons grew, and then they became the right age for marriage. And so their father, the Tsar, got them, summoned them one day and said, My sons, it is time for you to marry. And so tomorrow, you must go to the tall building in the city with your bow and arrows. And there you must stand in different directions and pull them tight and release your arrows. And where your arrow lands, it is there that you will find your bride. And so the following morning, they did, as the Tsar told them. And the oldest son, he went in the building and he pulled his arrow and he stretched it and he pulled it towards the east. And when he released it, the arrow travelled and travelled and landed in the yard of a boyar, a rich man. And what do you know? It landed just opposite the room of the boyar's daughter, just the right age to be married. And the middle son, he pulled and released his arrow and it travelled west. Travelled and travelled and travelled and landed just outside the window of a rich merchant. And this merchant had a daughter, and that daughter was sitting by that window. And what do you know? She was just the right age to be married. And the youngest son, his name was Ivan. He pulled his arrow, he pulled it towards the south. When he released it, it travelled and travelled and travelled and travelled and travelled and landed in a big thick black bog. And a frog, Jabba Kekirita, took it. And then the following day, the three brothers went to look. And the oldest brother, he found his arrows almost instantly in the yard of a rich boyar. And the daughter agreed to marry him. And the middle son, he found his arrow in the yard of a merchant by the window. And the merchant's daughter agreed to marry him. But Ivan, Oh, he travelled. He travelled for two days and two nights, over forests and over mountains. And finally, on the third day, he found the arrow on top of a rock. On this rock stood a frog, Jabba Kekirita. And the frog held the arrow in his hands. And the frog said to Ivan, Kva! Kva, Ivane, Tarski sin, umashi sezamene. Marry me, she said. But Ivan, he thought, and he said, But you're a frog. You're not my equal. I cannot marry you. What will people say? They will laugh at me. Kva, kva, Ivane, Tarski sine. Marry me. And you won't regret it. And Ivan wanted to run and run away from his luck and his fate. But he decided to marry the frog. Well, the weddings came and the three brothers got married and the two older brothers, oh, they had beautiful feasts with golden goblets and beautiful mead and celebrations and dancing. And Ivan, well, he had a quiet wedding for nobody to see that he was marrying a frog. And a few days after the wedding, the Tsar summoned his three sons and said, Tomorrow, I would like you, for your wives, to bake me a soft bread. I want to see if they can bake. For these were different times to the times now. And so Ivan went home. He went home with his head low, lower than his shoulders. And the frog saw him. And she said, Kva, kva, Ivane, Tarski sine, why are you sad? Have you heard an unkind word from your father? How can I not be sad? said Ivan to his wife the frog. 
For my father, the Tsar, has commanded that you bake him a bread. Ivan, son of the Tsar, said the frog, do not worry, go to sleep, for the morning is wiser than the evening. And so Ivan went to bed, and the frog, she took off her skin and she peeled it back, and there stood a beautiful young maiden, Vasilisa the Wise, Vasilisa Primrodna. And she went on the balcony and she shouted, Mikey Bavachki, saberete se, prigutvete se, da napravite chlap, takov chlap, kakov se miawa, kat biach primoya, pasti dom. And she shouted to the mothers and the maids to get to come forth and get ready to bake such a bread, a bread like the one she ate in her father's home. In the morning, when Ivan awoke, the frog had had the bread ready for a long time ago. He went and saw the bread and oh, such a bread, so magical it was, you couldn't think it. You couldn't dream it, only in a tale you could tell it. Ah, oh, it was baked golden to perfection and it had a beautiful smell, you know that beautiful smell of freshly baked bread. And it was smooth at the top and on top of the bread were castles, big castles, and on top of the castles were birds flying and around the castles were wild beasts running. The frog put the bread on a golden tray and gave it to Ivan to take to the Tsar. Ivan and his brothers took the breads that their wives had baked to their father the Tsar and he judged them. First he took the bread of his oldest son, the one that married a boyar's daughter, and it was burned and it was blackened with ash and it smelled disgusting. And he said, this bread, this bread, one can only eat if they're very, very hungry. And he tried the bread of his middle son, the one that was baked by the merchant's daughter. And it was underbaked and crooked. And he said, this bread, this bread only dogs can eat. And then he tried the bread baked by Vans wife, the frog, and he said, ah, this bread, this bread must only be eaten on feast days and celebrations. And then he told them, tomorrow, I'd like your daughters to weave a silken carpet in one night. I want to know how good they are at weaving. And so Ivan went home stooped head lower than his shoulders and his wife the frog saw him and said to him Ivan son of the Tsar Kva Kva Ivan Tsarski Sine why are you so sad have you heard an angry word from your father how can I not be sad for my father the Tsar has commanded that you weave him a silken carpet in one night Ivan, son of a Tsar, do not worry. Go to bed, go to sleep, for the morning is wiser than the evening. And Ivan went to sleep, and the frog took off and peeled her frog skin, and she became again Vasilisa Primrodna, Vasilisa the Wise. And she went out of the balcony, and she shouted in all directions. Mikey Bavachki, Elvati Prigutfete, the Napravite Kilim, the Kuf Kilim, Kakfatu Samstuyawa, Kudbiach Pribushtami. Mothers and maidens, come and gather forth and get ready to make a, a rug, such a rug as the one that I stood on when I lived in my father's house. In the morning, when Ivan awoke, the frog had had the beautiful rug weave. 
and he saw it. It was magnificent. Such a beautiful rug he had never seen. And I tell you, it was so beautiful that you couldn't think it. You couldn't dream it, only in tales you could tell it. It was woven with golden and silver thread. And it was decorated with the most beautiful embroidery of birds and blooming flowers. And the frog gave the silken carpet to Ivan to take to his father, the Tsar. And there the Tsar waited to see the carpets. And his oldest son, the carpet made by the boyar's daughter, the king looked at the carpet and said, this carpet, this carpet is only good to be used as a horse's coat. And then he looked at the beautiful rug, the silk rug done by the middle son's daughter, by the middle son's wife. He looked at it and he said, this carpet, this carpet is only good to be used to wipe somebody's feet. And then he looked at Ivan's wife's carpet, the one the frog had weaved, and he said, this carpet, ah, oh, this carpet, I will put in my room and I will take it out only in celebrations. And then he commanded again, tomorrow, tomorrow, come and invite your wives. I will put on a gathering, a feast. I will have meals made for them and they will eat as they dance for me and entertain me. For these were different times. I want to see if, you're, if your wives can dance. And again, Ivan went home with his head low and his shoulders stooped. And his wife saw him and said, Kva, kva, Ivane Tsarski Sine, why are you so sad? Have you heard a bad word from your father, the Tsar? Oh, said Ivan, how can I not be sad? For the Tsar, my father, has commanded that you come to the palace so you can dance for him. <laughs> Ivane Tsarski Sine. Go to sleep, for the morning is wiser than the evening. And then Ivan went to sleep. And in the morning when he awoke, the frog was waiting for him. And she told him, go to the festivities by yourself. I will join you later on. And when you hear a loud banging and a loud thunder, do not be alarmed, but tell everybody, do not worry. This is my froggy, and she comes in a barrel. And so it was evening, and Ivan went to the festivities in his father's palace. And there he met his brothers, and they were with their wives, and they had brushed their hair, and they put beautiful clothes, and they had decorated their faces, and they looked magnificent. And his brothers, they said to him, well, Ivane, where's your wife? What, well, you couldn't bring her a little handkerchief? And where did you find such a beauty? You must have walked all the bogs. And then all the guests went to sit down on the tables. And a loud noise came. Everything started shaking. The windows started shaking. It was thunder and everybody started panicking. But Ivan said to everybody, do not worry. For this is my wife, the froggy, my little froggy, and she comes in a barrel. And they all went to the windows to have a look at what was happening. And there was a beautiful carriage with six beautiful white horses. And the carriage stopped. And out of the carriage came a young girl, a woman. She was magnificent. When she came out of the carriage, it was so bright, it was like the sun shone. It was Vasilisa Primredna, Vasilisa the Wise. And she took 
her husband's wife, Ivan, and she led him through the oak tables laden with beautiful tablecloths. And they sat down to eat. And they ate and they drank. And when she finished drinking the last few droplets, she hid in her left sleeve. And when she finished eating, she hid the little bones of the roasted meat inside her right sleeve. And the other wives, the older sons, looked at this, thought, what is this? What is this magic? And they did the same. And then Vasilisa, the wives, took her husband's hand and led him to the dance floor. And then she danced gracefully. And when she lay, waved her left hand, a lake appeared. And when she waved her right hand, swans appeared and began gliding on the lake. Everybody's mouths dropped. They had never seen such a thing. And when she stopped dancing, everything disappeared. The lakes and the swans, like nothing, had happened. Well, the other princesses, they did the same. They went to dance on the dance floor with their husbands and they waved with the left hand and they sprinkled the guests with wine and they waved with the right hand and the bones went straight into the eyes of the king and of the Tsar and he was so angry he banished them from his palace. And during the night festivities, Ivan secretly escaped and went into his house. He searched high and low and searched high and low and finally found the frog skin. He threw it in the fireplace and watched it burn. When the festivities were finished, Ivan and Vasilisa the wise went home and she searched for her skin. She searched and searched and searched but couldn't find it. Ivan et Sarsky Sine, как фос историал, как фос не направил, she cried, what have you done? What have you done? I must go, I must go to the palace of my father, Koshche the Deathless. It is there that you will find me. And then she turned into a swan and flew out of the window. And Ivan, he put his arms on top of his face and he cried bitter tears. He cried and he cried and then he turned his head towards the heavens and cried to the heavens in all four directions and left and walked wherever his eyes took him. And he had been walking a long time or a short time, he didn't quite know, and ahead he saw an old man. And this old man said, Youngster, good day, where are you off to? And Ivan told the old man what he had done. Ah, Ivan et Sarskisine. Why did you have to burn the skin? You weren't the one to wear it. It was none of your business to be the one to burn it. Now Vasilisa resides in the house of father. Koshche the Deathless. But I tell you what, take this bowl of string and roll it on the ground and wherever it rolls you must follow it bravely. Good luck to you, said the old man. He gave the string to Ivan. Ivan rolled it and started walking. He walked and he walked through ancient dark woodlands and tall treacherous mountains and he walked and he walked through thick black bogs. He walked for a long time or he walked for a short time, he couldn't tell you. He was tired. And in one of the ancient woodlands in front of him he saw a big bear, a bear, and he went and took and he took his bow and arrow and went to pull it taut, but before he could release the arrow, the bear spoke in a human language. Ivane, Tsarski Sine, Ivan, send the Tsar. Take pity on me. Do not kill me. I'll become useful to you one day. And Ivan took pity on the bear and he carried on. And he walked and he walked following this bowl of string. 
and he walked and he walked in one of the green fields. He saw a hare, and again he went to kill the hare, but the hare, the hare spoke in a human voice. Ivane, Tsarski Sine, do not kill me. Take pity on me, for I will be useful to you one day. And Ivan once again took pity on the hare. And then he walked and he walked and he heard a great sound and he looked at the sky and there was a duck flying. And he again he went to kill the duck, but the duck spoke. Ivane, Tsarski Sine, do not kill me. Take pity on me. I'll become useful to you one day. And again, Ivan took pity on the duck. And then he walked. By this time, he'd been walking a very long time. He was parched and hungry and exhausted and every limb in his body hurt. And the ball of thread, when it took him near the deep blue sea, and there on the sand, he saw a pike flapping near death. And he said, this pike I'm finally going to eat. I'm starving. But this pike, it spoke to him in a human voice. Ivane, Tsarski Sine, take pity on me. Throw me in the sea. And Ivan, well, he took pity on the pike and threw the pike in the deep blue sea. And then he carried on following that ball of string until he reached an ancient woodland an ancient woodland and in that woodland he saw a little wooden hut it was a strange hut it stood on two chicken legs and it was spinning it was spinning round and round well you know whose hut that is don't you and Ivan looked at the hut and he spoke to the hut and said, Little hut, little hut, turn around with your back towards the forest and your face facing me. And the little hut turned around until it had its door facing Ivan. And Ivan opened the door and stepped inside. And inside, on top of a stove on the ninth shelf, was Baba Yaga, lying down, sharpening her sharp yellow teeth with a metal file, her breast, long breast, or resting on, on metal hooks, and her nose was so long it reached the ceiling. Ivane, Tsarski Sine, to show she took a Sam. Ivan said of the Tsar, have you come here out of your own will or out of woe? asked Baba Yaga. Ah, oh, Baba Yago, replied Ivan. First, give me food, give me water, put me in a bathhouse, and then you can ask me questions. And so Baba Yaga, she fed him. She watered him, she steamed him in a bath, and then Ivan told him what had happened. Hmm, I know, I know, said Baba Yaga. Vasilisa Premradna is with her father, Koshche the Deathless. Now, Koshche the Deathless. Koshche Basmartni. He is a villain which lives between the two worlds, between the living and the dead world. And his skin is translucent, so you can see his bones underneath. She lives with Koshche the Deathless, said Baba Yaga. His kingdom is beyond nine lands and beyond nine seas into the tenth. And there you will find his palace. But he is Koshche the Deathless, and he is not feared by anybody. He cannot be killed with an arrow. He cannot be killed with a dagger. Where hides his death? asked Ivan. His death? 
His death hides at the tip of a needle. That needle is inside an egg. That egg is inside a duck. That duck is inside a hare. That hare is inside a wooden chest. That wooden chest is atop of an oak tree. That oak tree is inside a wooden ancient forest. And Kostya the Deathless guards it with the apple of his eye. And therefore he fears no one. Baba Yaga, generous as she was that day, showed Ivan the path to go. And the following morning, fed and watered, Ivan walked and walked until he reached that ancient woodland. In that woodland, he saw a huge oak tree. <sighs> the top was going beyond the clouds. Its highest branches were covering the sun and its roots were deep, deep underground. And just on top of that ancient oak, he could just about see that wooden, what's it called, wooden box wooden chest. And he thought to himself, where is that bear when you need it? And no sooner had he thought it, a bear appeared out of nowhere and started climbing the tree and shaking the tree and the box fell down and shattered into a thousand pieces. And from there, from the box started running a rabbit, a hare, it ran and ran and ran and there came Ivan's rabbit and it hit the rabbit and tore the rabbit into a thousand pieces. And out of the rabbit started running a duck, a duck flying and flying and flying and Ivan's duck started flying against it and hit the duck and out of the hit, out of a duck flew an egg and it landed inside the sea. Ivan looked at what happened and he started to cry but as he was crying he saw a pike, a pike emerge from the waters and it had the egg inside its mouth and Ivan took the egg, broke the egg, took the needle, broke the tip of the needle and Ivan and Koshche the deathless died, formed ashes and dust and Ivan went into Koshche palace and there he saw Vasilisa the wise she was waiting for him at the gate. Ah, Ivane, Tsarski Sine, she welcomed him. And Ivan went and took a steed, the fastest steed, and him and Vasilisa the wise ran home on the steed until they reached the kingdom. And there, there were big celebrations. And there was another wedding and such a feast there was and they began their life as a couple as a married couple Vasilisa no longer the same person Ivan no longer the same person after his initiation and journey and they were ready to be married and to begin that next phase of marriage. And I tell you, the celebrations were wonderful, such dancing and such merriment. And if you go there, there is still a little mead and a golden goblet waiting for you.